Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the series where we are highlighting CX leaders. And today, I am very excited to be joined by Gracia Carver, who is the VP and Chief Experience Officer at Blue Cross Blue Shield Kansas City. So, Gracia, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah. Would you like to tell our viewers a little bit more about you, what you do, and a little bit about your experience in CX? Sure, sure. Be glad to. So, um, I kind of fell into customer experience through customer service, kind of a long story. Um, but my background is actually not healthcare. It is consumer products and services, everything from box chocolate to Mickey Mouse ears and some things in between. I um, had, had a lot of exposure to consumer needs, uh, what works, what doesn't work, um, and a lot of service um, components of that as well in my background. And then about 10 years ago or so started to work on customer experience practice and driving culture change through organizations. My career has really been in customer care. Um, 10 years ago, I really wanted to expand that because, you know, it's really interesting to me that there's a lot of entities out there and organizations that, that want to fix the contact centers, right? Um, which is an, just an ongoing situation and reality um, that customer service is, is always evolving and always improving and always growing its people, right? And um, But the reality is the, the reason consumers and members call into customer service are for issues that aren't generated by, by the contact center, right? The contact center doesn't drive contacts into the contact center. It is process, technology, um, programs, you know, offerings, products in the consumer space, issues with those that drive contacts into that customer service organization. And, and I really think, you know, it's important for all organizations to um, really have customer obsession. And that needs to, to live throughout the organization where everyone owns the experience and every area, every department is really working to drive better experiences and drive issues and hassles out for their members and their customers. So um, really started to become passionate about that, became certified as a customer experience professional, um, had a lot of opportunity to drive some, some culture change. Um, and the last organization I, I had the opportunity to work for and now Blue KC as well. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in the questions. The first question I'm interested in is, what are the most essential tools for CX professionals? That's such a good question, and I'm going to answer that in two ways. So there's, there's tools, there's software tools and technology I think are critical, but then there's also practice tools that I think are critical. Um, and I know, you know, for me, when I was really getting into the, the practice and understanding what customer experience is and understanding how to um, really look at the customer journey and think about, think about things a little bit differently and more holistically for customers. Um, there's a plethora of, of really good resources out there. I know Forrester Research is um, one that I've really relied on. And I bought their book called Outside In and you should see I have it tagged. <laughs> it's like become my Bible. Um, for this practice. So I, I would say begin with really educating yourself about what a practice consists of um, and how to think about experience tools, toolkits, um, processes to help you really grow that practice. From a technology perspective, I know for us having a good speech and text analytics tool, really going beyond surveys. Surveys are important but we really need to be capturing that voice of customer feedback through all of our channels um, and then really feeding and porting that data into a good speech analytics tool that helps you um, create structure out of unstructured data and most importantly, creates actionable information that you can drive through the organization. And that's a practice we've built here um, last year. We really put a lot of effort into that and it has paid off our, our customer um, effort score. A lot of the metrics that we look at um, have really benefited, which means the experience is improving for our members, right? So I think having good 
survey platforms, good voice of customer platforms, making sure that you've got VOC in all of your channels, um, and then driving that through a speech analytics um, tool and creating dashboards uh, to, to have visibility across the organization. We now have ownership for touch points uh, because of that data within the organization, and we're driving a lot of improvement. So technology-wise, that's one. Um, you know, process and customer experience practice wise, you know, journey mapping, um, service blueprinting, all of those things are, are huge. Having a good collaboration tool um, that you can use not only in person, but online has paid dividends for us. And there are many out there. Um, and then I think just from a uh, practice perspective, one thing that has paid off for us here at Blue KC is something called co-creation. So whenever we are designing experiences or creating um, awareness for current state process and pain point issues within the organization, we get the key stakeholders together um, and we co-create the, the experience and co-create the solution that has paid off dividends here. And then lastly, I will say to drive the culture through the organization, um, really getting good stakeholders involved and creating what we call our CX council, which is cross-functional subject matter experts across the entire company. And they help us prioritize the pain points that we're gonna work on. And that has really broken down silos. It has increased understanding of um, the processes from A to Z that are causing pain. And then they're part of the solution. So those are the ones just top of mind I would talk about for, for tools. It seems to you seem to have a lot of unique solutions to work on your CX. I haven't really heard much about CX councils or things like that. Yeah, it's it's um, it's really helped us because you know our I have a small but mighty department, and if we create the right culture where everyone owns the experience, I should never have a big department, right? Every employee should be thinking about the experience and the work that they do. But having that CX council helps us as well with just subject matter expertise of the root cause of some of these issues, having them together to understand the downstream, upstream um, impacts of the work they do has, has made a huge difference in overall understanding and, and has created some great improvement as well. Well, moving straight on to question two, um, and this is one of my favorite questions, and I think it's talked about a lot, but it's important. Um, why is empathy so important in customer experience? Well, there's, there's so many facets to that question I could go down. Um, you know, I have responsibility for customer experience strategy and culture here, but I also have responsibility for our, our commercial customer service areas. Um, and within customer service, you know, obviously empathy, really listening, understanding what a member's going through, making sure we thoroughly understand and have listened to the issue so we can provide the right resolution is key. Um, I will tell you from an experience perspective, um, we've, we've taken a little bit of a tangential view on that um, in terms of doing deep dive interviews with our members. And I'll give you a specific example. We had a situation where um, our members were having some problems with their member IT card. For some reason, we, we got some information wrong. Um, work to fix that, but, but to get there, not only did we want to understand the issue and the pain point, okay, the member ID has some missing or wrong information, that's the issue, but we wanted to drive understanding through the organization to increase urgency to fix the matter that um, showed the impact to their life. So in one of the examples, you know, we did a deep dive with a member who um, stopped going to the doctor. This person had a chronic condition and that's the opposite of the behavior we wanna drive, right? We care about the health of our members. So that really increased understanding, not only of the issue, but the impact that was having to their life and really created a much better understanding and and it touched the hearts, you know, of our employees um, and got attention to it and fix, fixed it much quicker. So I, I think there's a whole bunch around empathy that's really important, but those are the things that, that have, have really mattered to us in our practice. And I can definitely see how being in the health industry, empathy would be that much more important because yeah. 
it's, it really is impacting people's livelihood. That's right. Going on to another question, omnichannel experiences. They've been talked about a lot recently, a lot in the last couple of years. Uh, what would you say are the most important components of an omnichannel strategy? You know, as I, as I witness and I watch members and I, I you know, kind of observe um, where they come to us from, you know, through the phone, through, through the websites, um, through the mobile app, uh, whatever the case may be. What I've really seen is it's, it's not either or, it's kind of and, um, and that we're meeting that member where they are in their moment of need. Um, and I think having all of those channels available so that a member can easily reach us um, is what's important to us. That's an area that we're still working on here at Blue KC to, to even be much better at, but we need to make sure we're meeting our member and our customers in their moment of need, the way they need to reach out to us um, and get answers or get solutions. Really about that customer journey that you were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. on that. Yeah, it's not, an, it's not an either or, it's an and. Yeah. I like that. All right. Going on to our, our last question is what are some basic customer service expectations and why is meeting these expectations so important? So I think fundamentally and for a long, long time, that really the most basic need is that their issue is resolved <laughs> and it's resolved now and in their moment, not five calls from now, not six emails from now, um, but that they're, re they're, they're offered a resolution um, immediately. I think beyond that, you know, one of the things that we're seeing in our industry, and, and I see it um, in so many other industries, is that we are personalizing uh, service, we're personalizing products, we're personalizing programs for that specific customer. Um, and really getting to know who they are and what their needs are. And when we get really good at it, we'll be better at anticipating those needs, right? So um, I, I think resolution, longstanding, basic need, um, and then really making sure that we're personalizing experiences. I guess to finalize that is, is meeting these expectations and so is, is so important because just to have a good brand recognition, to have uh, what would you say would be like the most important thing other than being there for your customers? Yeah, I mean, I, I know there's, you know, lots of attention around loyalty and I, I really get all that. The, the industry I'm in, and again, my background's consumer products and services. So loyalty is really important in terms of, uh, you know, brand recognition, um, repurchase, all of the things that kind of add up to keeping a customer long-term and revenue and all of that. Um, you know, in this industry, it's a little bit different in that it, it's really about, are we making a difference in somebody's health life? If we think about what's most important for human beings, none of us can do or accomplish anything if we're not healthy. So that, that's really our focus. Um, and I think the crux of, of who we are and what we need to be thinking about, um, not really about you know, are they loyal to us for, from a revenue perspective? Um, those things have to be there, you know, to, to run an organization and for us to be able to, to pay for the needs of our members. But ultimately what we care about is engagement to improve the health lives of our members. All right, well, that was my, my final question for you. Do you have any last thoughts that you would like to share anything with the CX community or, or new professionals entering the field? Yeah, there's so many things. I think the most important thing is creating a culture in your organization that helps everyone understand that experience belongs to every employee. It, it's not a department. It's, it's not a project over here. Um, it is a mindset, an obsession, um, Every single area can contribute. You know, I've been asked, well, I'm in finance. How do I contribute? Well, finance can make sure that there's funding for customer experience projects, right? HR can make sure they're hiring talent that is customer centric, right? So there are things that every single part of the organization can do 
to enhance. And if we put the member and the customer first, all the rest of those business objectives happen naturally. Um, but I think it's really important that everyone understands the culture and a culture that is being organized, driven, and created that says everyone's responsible for experience. That's great. All right. Well, that, that concludes this for today. Uh, if people want to connect with you, can they find you on LinkedIn or anything I am. like that? I'm on LinkedIn. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Perfect. That will be linked down below. So definitely check out Gracia on LinkedIn. Thank you so much, Gracia, for being here today. This was a great conversation and I learned so much from you. I have to put a plug in here for our YouTube channel. If you like this video and want to see more interviews with CX leaders, definitely subscribe and like this video. And with that, thank you, Gracia, and thanks for watching. And thanks for having me. Very honored. Thank you.